Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Let's Learn This Together, and this is part two of creating a top-down platformer, specifically using tiles. Up until this point, this project has been creating objects that we can collide with and jump on, we can move underneath, we have collisions working for the front and back and in a 3D space. Now we're gonna add in a tile set that we can use auto tiles with and get it working with collisions like this pretty much automatically. So let's dive into that. Now, if you don't have this project, you can download this one or the finished project so you can just tear it apart, use it in your code, your games, whatever. This is totally free to you and you can use it whatever way you want. If you appreciate the video or the content, leave a like, it shows me how much you appreciate it as well. Now for the tile sets, I'm gonna go ahead and add an existing one here. And that tile set is gonna be Tile Set Jungle. I'll link to where you can get this. It's a free asset on itch. This artist does some amazing work, really great tile sets. I like it a lot. And you can also use them in the auto tiler, which it already brought in, perfect. So I've got two auto tiles here, one for the grass and one for the actual things we're gonna doing the collisions with. Now, having multiple auto tiles is totally fine. Having multiple tile sets is totally fine. We're actually gonna describe in code exactly which tile sets and layers we should be looking at, so no worries about that. There are also some animated tiles we have right here, but I'm not really using those, and they're just really cool. Let's go and jump into our room, and we're gonna have five tile layers, layers all together. We're gonna have the ground, the grass, and now these ones are important. We're gonna have tiles, labeled tiles 16. This is gonna be the height of these that they're at. So if you want them to be a different height, I'd recommend naming them differently because this is what we're gonna be looking at inside of code. So we have tiles 16, 32, and tiles 48. For the ground, I'm just gonna go ahead and select our tile set. I'm gonna grab the library for auto tile one, and then just bump this up a bunch. Now this is a huge room, but whatever. We're gonna go ahead and do this, and then I'll bring it down a smidgen, and then I'm gonna put the instances up here. I'm gonna to go to the grass, and now I'm just gonna add some grass inside of there. Same thing, I'm gonna select the auto tile, but this time, I'm gonna just fill it in a little bit like this and I can right click to fill in grass in different areas and just make it unique enough so that you can see that we're moving around and doing stuff. Okay, cool. Now comes the actual adding of tiles that we're gonna use in the collision. So we need to pick the tile set again. Now you don't have to use an auto tile, doesn't matter at all. You can use different tile sets for each one of these. It's totally fine. I'm just using one because it's a lot simpler and the auto tile makes my artwork look decent, like doing this looks good instead of having to try to pick it all together. If you don't know how to use auto tile, you can check out my tutorials for that. Just search auto tile. But I'm gonna make three of them right here. So let's do this. Now, when we do the auto tile here, they all kind of look the same. So what I'm gonna do is draw them up a little bit higher, and then I'm gonna come into the actual tile, and I'm gonna select uh, this portion right here for two, because then that makes it look like it's up higher. I'm gonna do the same thing for the last layer. This time I'm actually gonna grab all three, put it right there, and then use the auto tile to fill in the rest, although I think I did that in reverse order. Yeah, so let's go ahead and do this. Oh, there we go, that works. And now we have one, two, three different layers on different levels that we're gonna be able to jump on and move between. How we're gonna do that is inside of our code. So let's open the create event. Go ahead and do this. This is the create event of our player. And we're gonna be using tiles for our collisions. So we're gonna make an array that then we can loop through in a custom script that we make. So this array is just gonna hold whichever tile sets we want to use. I'm gonna call it tiles. The first one is gonna be layer, tile map, get ID, and then we need to pass in the layer specifically, which we can get by using layer get ID. So we're nesting a few functions here. And then you just pass in whichever one you want. Now the order is important. You wanna start with the lowest level moving up because we're checking at the bottom, moving up each time to see if we have a collision. So then we've got tiles one, which I'm just gonna copy this whole section here, which is gonna be equal to tiles 32. 
and tiles 2 will be equal to tiles 48. Now, the reason we're doing 16, 32, and 48 is because of the tile set we're using. So these are 16 by 16 tiles. If we had larger tiles, we could do a different size because remember, the Z, the level that they're at, is dependent on the size of the tile that you're using. Now let's open up our collisions. I'm gonna make a full screen out of this because we have our place meeting 3D function. Now we're gonna make a new function called tile meeting 3D. And we're gonna pass in a new X, new Y, and the tiles that we want to be looking at. And then immediately we're gonna do a for loop through all of those tiles. So we pass in an array here, which is awesome because then we can use as many tile sets as we want. The more you use, the slower your game is probably going to get. So use this with a little bit of caution. You don't wanna have a hundred different tile sets that you're colliding with. You just wanna have as few as you need to make it look and function the way you want. So we're gonna do a for loop, var i, i is less than the array length of tiles, and then we increase. So all of the code inside of here is gonna be inside of a for loop. If we get to the end of the for loop, then there's no collision, so we're gonna return false right there. Okay, first thing inside of here is we need to get the size of the tile. So I'm gonna say var tile z is equal to i plus one times negative 16. So this is gonna give us exactly how much it should be, and then we're gonna keep that for each one that we go through here. Now, just like in the place meeting 3D, we're gonna do an a X and Y check. So I'm gonna say var collision equals tile map get at pixel tiles I, so whichever tile set we're looking at, new X, new Y plus tile Z. So this is gonna just tell us if there is a simple collision inside of here. And if there is a collision, if it's greater than zero, tile map get at pixel will return a real number, negative one if there's an error, so it might be worth checking for that. But if it returns a number more than zero, then there is a collision where that's at. So we can just say if it's greater than zero and z minus one, is greater than or equal to tile Z. So we're gonna check one pixel underneath where we're at to see if we are colliding with it in the Z zone. If we are, then we're gonna return true. Now, I know this looks uh, fairly simple, assuming you add the right number of parentheses, but this took a lot of figuring out exactly how to make this work correctly. So. If you go and alter any of this, you're free to, but if you do, just know that this is not as easy to come up with or tweak as it might look. This took a lot of practice and a lot of uh, messing around to actually make it work exactly as expected. But with that being said, we now have a function we can throw into our collision, just like we did for place meeting. So let's come up in here, and for tile collisions, we can do a very similar thing to what we've already done up here. We just check it with the tile collisions instead. So we're gonna say if tile meeting 3D, X plus our X speed, Y, and pass in tiles, assuming you spell it right. Now this time we can actually just set our X speed equal to zero. We don't need to do this entire thing. It's unnecessary because of the collision that we got inside of here. We, and how we're colliding with them on the Z and moving us all around, we don't need to. We can just say our speed now equals zero. So if we do this for the X and Y plus Y speed, tiles Y speed equals zero. And so now we can try this out. If we come up here, we collide with it. Now we don't have the depth up here working yet, but we can jump. Now, when we land on it, it doesn't quite work yet because we need to set up our Z floor to reach the top of our tiles here because we're colliding with it and then we're going too far down and we can't move. Now, the only issue over here is that there seems to be some kind of invisible collision over here that we're running into and that doesn't look any good. So when our depth is upright, 
we'll be able to walk all the way underneath this. That makes sense. But we have that issue. So what's going on? So this is almost working the way we want, but let's go into our room because we have to actually design it just a little bit different than how we did right here. So I'm gonna come in and on these tiles, I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, erase them. So if I right click, so if I select tile 32, I can right click and erase, select tile 48, come in here and erase just the bottom portion of these. So on this one, we can also erase it. So the top part here is perfectly fine. It's this bottom section that our game is looking at and saying, oh yeah, this collision goes out a very long ways and we don't actually want that. And so now I'm going to change to the grass tile set and then I'm going to put in the tiles for the ground here in a way that doesn't look bad. Well, at least hopefully it doesn't look too bad. You can obviously figure out which tiles are supposed to go there and make it look exactly natural. But the point is we wanna draw these bottom parts in a different tile layer because we don't wanna be checking for collisions with them. We only wanna be checking with up higher. So now if we run this, our collisions are gonna look a lot and a lot better. We can walk all the way up to this as you would expect. So it gets rid of that wonky invisible collision back here, which is what we wanted. Now, let's actually get it so we can walk and jump onto these. So let's move back into the player step event. And what we're gonna do is actually add some more to our Z floor snapping right here, because this is looking for objects and it works as expected. Now we need to make it work with tiles and do basically the same thing. So I'm actually going to say else inside of here and add our Z floor to here, because this is going to take care of all of the objects specifically. And then in this larger else statement, we're gonna do a for loop. We're gonna loop through all those tiles as we've done before. So get the array length of tiles, and we're gonna go through, and if we are colliding with any of them, we're gonna set our Z floor based on that tile sets Z, and if not, then we'll also set the Z floor here so that it works for both tiles and objects in this chunk of code. So if tile map get at pixel tiles i because we're looping through x y plus i plus one times negative sixteen. If we are colliding here, we're going to update our z floor to whatever one we're supposed to be at. So times negative sixteen, and then we're going to break because we don't need to look anymore. This will save a little bit of memory each time. And then if there's no collision, Z floor equals zero. So let's test this out. And now we should be able to walk on these tiles. Jump and voila, our shadow moves as we go. We can jump all the way up here and that looks and feels great. We can also jump from one to the other if this was actually closer, but the shadows all the way over here just kind of looks like you should be able to. And so now that we have the collisions working in here, let's jump into our tile meeting collision and update the depth of our player. So, so here we're gonna check to see if we're colliding with any of the tiles and update our depth according to what it's at. So var bottom collision equals to tile map get at pixel tiles i, because remember we're in a loop. This is gonna be our x B box bottom plus Y speed. Then I'm just gonna copy this three times because we're gonna be checking our bottom, our left collision, and our right collision. We don't need to check the top because we can only move behind the tiles. We've already got the collision working on the top of it. So these ones are all the same here. And then we're gonna change this OBJ player X for the left to our B box left and this one down here to our B box right, but we're always keeping the Y the same. Now we add an if check. So if any of these have collisions, or the right collision, now we wanna check all of those inside of one because if any of them are colliding, we'll return true. So add that in a parentheses. Then we're gonna say, and our Z minus one is greater than or equal to the tile Z. We update our depth based on where we're at inside of the for loop. So I plus one times 100. 
Now, I will say that if you try to get the depth based on the tile layer in your room, like you should be able to, so like this is 100, we're at zero, you would think that you could just do that and set our depth to it. I was having issues, it was not returning the numbers I was expecting, so use the tile layer get depth at your own peril. If you get it to work, let me know what I was possibly doing wrong, I'd love to hear about it. But this will update our player depth, and for the most part, we'll be all good to go now. So we can walk behind it, we can walk all the way in it, and now we have full tile collisions working as you would expect. And these ones, I think, work a lot smoother than the object collisions for the most part. Like you can just fall right off and it looks really nice. It doesn't always work, there are a few glitches, but for the most part, this depth looks and functions really, really well. The tile collisions, I think, are the best way to go and they allow you the most flexibility and look the best. If you enjoyed this video or learned anything, please leave a like. It helps me out a lot, I appreciate it, and it shows me that you appreciate the work I'm doing and it helps me to continue doing that. This series was requested by my patrons, so if you want to have a vote in what I work on or what's and see what's coming up next, check that out and you'll be able to have the inside scoop on all upcoming stuff. Thanks for joining me, and as I always say, keep making, Keep learning, and I'll talk to you later. A huge thank you to all of the awesome people who support me over on Patreon. Their names are on the screen now, and every dollar pledged helps me create more awesome content. You can support me for as little as $1 a month and get access to exclusive perks like my Discord server, your name in the credits, early access to my YouTube videos and courses, and more. Check it out at patreon.com slash letslearnthistogether.com or find the link in the description below and become a patron today.